All right, guys, so now that everything is nice and set up, our history is deleted, our mesh is frozen, we have our animated uh, explosion of, of the model. Uh, let's go ahead and start getting to the, the baking process using Turtle. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that uh, Turtle is loaded. And you can really check on that real quick to see it added to the, your list of render settings. Okay. Um, but if it's not, then what you need to do is go to Window, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager, and scroll down to the bottom. Should be capped right here. Here it is, turtle.mll, loaded, auto load. That's generally the way I, I just have it loaded and auto loaded. Um, so make sure that's checked. And then that will uh, that will enable the the, the turtle plugin with the the render settings, um, as well as add a whole slew of um, new new shaders that you can use that are turtle specific. So far, I've been very very happy with Turtle. Um, it, it gives me a much faster speed than uh, Mental Ray, um, and some pretty good results on on what I can bake. So what I'm going to do is uh, here's the render settings, and you'll notice Turtle tab has a whole slew of options. Um, we'll kind of touch on this here in a moment. Um, but the first thing I want to do is before we get everything all set up this way is I want to show you that there's a rendering editor under Turtle called the Bake Layer Editor. And this one's already been set up. Um, but what you can do is you can add a new layer. And what I have done is I have a Turtle default bake layer and then a normal bake layer. Um, and what you can do is, is by customizing these layers, you can set up um, different render passes for the different maps that you want to do. If they have different uh, source surfaces or envelope surfaces, that kind of thing. You can set these things up to where with one click in your options over here. So if I go to um, bake layer, a normal layer, and then I have default bake layer by changing between these two it'll change my settings um, and I can have it, have, have it set up to where I can basically do a one click uh, setup. So what I'm going to do is real quick I'm just going to kind of show you kind of an example of uh, how you can make this work and so I'm going to create a new layer and this is the ILL bake layer. I'm going to edit the layer because I want to change its name and I'm just going to call this one uh, test okay just to kind of give you an example. So under test, I have nothing set um, yet, but I'm, but I'm going to need to. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on my low Scott's peg. This is going to be my target. This is what I want to have baked. So I'm going to add selected to it. All right. And then I can go over to say, let me go ahead and just hide the high. And then let's click on say this uh, connector piece here. Okay. So this is a low connector. I'm going to go ahead and add it to target as well. If you notice, when I've added these, it does not add uh, a source yet. The source is going to be our high poly that we're going to get this information from. So if I go and show my high, I'm going to click on this low piece here because that's a low peg shape. I'm going to add that to it. Now if I click on the low, you'll notice that its sources has no sources yet. All right. This is one of the cool things I like about the way the turtle sets it up is you can customize uh, each specific target with each specific source. So you can have a situation where maybe in this case uh, I'll have a low poly object here that's going to need multiple pieces that are going to be targets whereas I'll have other pieces uh, that may only have one source shape. Okay, so it's just a real quick way of grouping all these things together. So in this case, I have the low connector shape. The low connector is needs to be baked off of the high, so high connector shape. All right, so that's the way the turtle bake layer editor works. You don't have to use this. I just find it kind of useful when I'm uh, making multiple maps as a way of kind of organizing things. Uh, the same basic menu is available under. Uh, the baking targets and sources. Okay, it still it does the same thing where you have low and you also have high. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to start out with is I'm going to start out with the um, the normal map. Um, basically, you have sampling sample rates zero four. Uh, this is how many samples per pixel. This creates a much nicer, smoother image 
Um, for the moment though, just kind of scroll this thing down just to make it so that it's going to render really quick. Global illumination, we'll get into this later on. Same thing with environment uh, options. But the main thing I want to focus on right now is baking. So the first thing that happens is that you have texture and uh, vertices. We want to leave it at texture because we're trying to bake out these maps. Uh, you also have render type baking or rendering. If you set it to render, then you're going to get a nice rendered image. Yay! That's not what we want, is we want to bake this thing out to the texture, so we want to set it to baking. Okay. Now we, we will get we will get what we want. So first thing I want to do is we have our targets, we have our sources. Uh, envelope surfaces, if we need to, we can add an envelope, but for the most part it will automatically have use the envelopes here. The main thing I want to make sure we have set is closest or in this case it's going to probably be inside only is what is with the way this thing is set up because we want it to bake inside the model, okay, inside these pieces. That's why we built the low poly outside of the high poly is so that we can set it to in, inside only or inside first um, and it'll have us uh, bake some nice clean uh, normal maps. Generally speaking when you have uh, protrusions and things coming in, coming out of out of your cages, uh, it'll lead to a lot of uh, normal map errors. Um, so if you leave everything, keep everything outside, uh, without any kind of penetrations or anything going through, uh, what it allows it to do is it'll bake a lot more evenly. Okay. So transfer settings, sampling preset, closest, world space. Um, this is also something else you can set to inwards for the normal map. Uh, at the very bottom here we have our outputs um, and right now I have it set to full shading. What I really want is just to have normal map and normal map selected. Uh, we want to make sure it's on tangent space for this application uh, and go ahead and hit bake. And as you can see it's doing a quick but dirty uh, bake of our uh, normal map really really quick. There's a little bit of clipping, might be to fix that in a moment, but uh, I think that's just might be sampling errors. But we can see that we have a nice normal map that, that's come out from Alright, so a couple of final steps. Go to common settings, and what I like to do is change my background color to RGB 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1. Okay, and that gives us that wonderful uh, blue, greenish, purplish color uh, that normal maps are known for, which will give us a nice even background here uh, that our normal map can operate on so that when we're mixing maps together, uh, we'll, we'll end up being able to mix them pretty much more easily. All right, so width 512 by 512. Let's just go ahead and bump that up to 1024. 1024. And then I want to merge to one map because we want to have all the parts on, on the one. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to save to file. I just want to make sure it's saved to the render view. We can uh, render it out later. Now, edge dilation controls of how big your borders off of these this thing is. Uh, I'm just going to set that down to about two for the moment. Um, depending upon your image resolution and how closely packed your UVs are, uh, you may or may not want more or less edge dilation. Uh, the main thing is you just don't want it to dilate from one UV set into another UV shell um, and thereby overriding your UVs. So with these new settings, just our little test, this is what we'll end up with. Okay, uh, Got a little bit of errors and things going on in through here, but overall fairly clean normal map, pretty quick. So resuming, going to the sampling. Right here, let's crank that up to one and four, and then hit it again. This will take a little longer. There are multiple samples. But as you can see, the results, um, the resulting difference is much smoother, not nearly as many uh, errors. Uh, this should work pretty well for our normal map, okay? So the same process for doing the whole sconce, the whole model, or whatever models, is just like for these two, okay? You just set your, you set up your target surfaces and your source surfaces. Um, 
set up your envelopes if you need to. I found that changing your background color is very, very helpful. Um, and then set it up to, to bake the normal map. So the next step we're going to go into is going to be uh, ambient occlusion.